Hello everyone and welcome back to AmbleMark.com where you can find real firepower online. As always, I'm Rodney Phillips and what I'd like to talk to you today about is conditions of readiness related to your handgun. That would mean carrying as well as home storage. For those of you that may not be aware, this whole concept and there's five conditions of readiness was developed by Colonel Jeff Cooper sometime around the 1980s. For those of you who are unfamiliar with him, get familiar with him. Digest everything that he said, because if you don't, you're quite simply doing it wrong. An amazing source of knowledge and way ahead of his time. One of the reasons I bring Colonel Cooper up, you have to kind of keep the context. He was a big 1911 guy. He was a huge developer of the 10 millimeter cartridge. Salute to him for that. But keep in mind, those conditions of readiness were specifically related to the 1911 style handgun. They quite simply don't apply to some of the more modern guns that have come out in the decades since. As always, you have to kind of have a little bit of history before you can understand the present. What I'd like to do is I have four different styles of handguns laid out here. I chose these guys for very specific reasons. We'll talk about what they are as we go forward. This guy here is a 1911 from Springfield Armory. Fabulous gun, been around forever, but won't work like the rest of these guys. So first condition that Colonel Cooper laid out was condition four. That's what most people determine to be a complete safe weapon. You may be on the range sometime and the range safety officer will tell you to clear the gun and get to condition four. What he means by that is, is we're gonna remove the magazine and we're going to open the slide so that you can visibly check the chamber and make sure that there's nothing in here. I'm gonna reach out over here and grab all of my little snap caps, as you can see, so we're not training with live rounds. Very bad idea, whether you're at home or on film. So condition four for a 1911 style gun is just that. Mag out, chamber clear, no problem. Now, let's move on to condition three. Condition three is this. What I need to do first with this style of gun is to close the slide, and then I need to release the hammer, okay? What I'll do next is simulate putting a round in the magazine, like so, and then I'm gonna insert the magazine into the well. Gun's still a paperweight because there's not a round chambered. The safety on a 1911 will not work until the hammer's cocked, so I can't do anything else to make this gun more safe. Condition three. Now, what would condition two be for this firearm is quite simple. What I'm gonna do is chamber the round, just like that, but I need to do some other things to this guy first, which is hammer forward. Condition two is hammer forward. So what I'm gonna to try to do is get a hold of this fella, and I ease the hammer forward. We covered that the fact that the safety won't work until the trigger is cocked or to the rear, this is condition two. Round chambered, hammer forward. If I want to get to condition one, I would have to cock the hammer and apply the safety. This is the stage, or you've heard the phrase, locked and cocked. This is what they mean. Trigger cocked, safety's locked, everything's all tied up. When I want to shoot the gun, I would merely drop the safety, now this would be condition zero, fight mode or shoot mode. So what I'm gonna do is carefully get a hold of this guy, just for habit's sake. Hard to do with a 1911 backwards. I'm gonna lay him down. So some of you who may not be terribly familiar with firearms might have been a little concerned that you actually have to get a hold of the hammer on a 1911 and pull the trigger to get it to go forward. We weren't the only ones concerned because as time went on, gun manufacturers decided that they could borrow features from a double and single action revolver and apply them to a semi-automatic pistol. One of the greatest examples of this is the Beretta 92. This guy replaced the 1911 in the military. They used it for about 30 years and it went on to a different gun since then. But largely they chose this because of the safety features on the weapon. Condition four for him is exactly the same as it is for the 1911. We have the magazine removed, slide lock to the rear so I can visibly inspect the chamber. 
To get to condition three, we're just going to close the slide and insert the magazine. Condition three is mag inserted, safety on, no round in the chamber. This is where things get a little complicated with the gun with a decocker. And for those of you that don't know, I'm going to actually demonstrate how the decocker works. So if I tried to cock the hammer from here while the safety is on, it doesn't catch. Nothing happens to this firearm until you cancel the safety. You'll notice even the trigger becomes disconnected. On this model, what happens is the decocker actually moves the firing pin out of the way. This gun has a decocker. So, unlike the 1911, I can use the safety to close the hammer or bring the hammer forward. But, this gun does allow me to do this. You'll notice the major difference in these two. This hammer follows home. It's the way the gun was designed. So this does actually have a condition too. Round chambered, hammer forward, safety on. The only way that you can get the gun to be ready to fire is to one, cancel the safety and then pull the trigger the long hard way. And I'll demonstrate as I index the trigger, so to speak, hammer goes with. If I did that long enough and hard enough, the gun would eventually shoot. However, this is condition zero. Hammer back, safety off. Now if I hit the trigger, the gun will discharge. Watch this, however. If I apply the safety here, hammer always decocks and goes forward. So you'll notice there is no locked and cocked on this guy. It skips condition one. There's only condition four, three, two, and zero. It's a significant thing for people to remember. This gun was designed pretty much around the idea that you have to deliberately pull the trigger to get the gun to fire. Okay? So skip the step. Going forward in time a little bit more, Gun manufacturers came up with the polymer frame striker fired gun. For those of you that don't know, striker fired means doesn't have a hammer. And that's going to become significant related to its condition of readiness. Condition four for this gun, which is a Smith & Wesson model m &P, Fabulous gun, lots of them on the market, really like it. Condition four, magazine removed, slide lock to the rear, safety is on, this lever is the safety up is on and that way I can visibly inspect the chamber and make sure there's nothing in it. Now condition three pretty similar to the rest I'm going to close the slide take the magazine and insert it. Condition three safety no round chambered very important no round chambered so when I want the gun to fire I have to do some stuff to get that to happen. Well the stuff I have to do is first chamber around right one of the things I like about this gun is I can use the slide while the safety is applied or on. So to get to condition number two, it really isn't number two. Can't be two because this gun doesn't have a hammer. Remember before condition two was hammer forward, this doesn't have a hammer. What I've actually done is skip two and put this gun in condition one, which means the only thing I can do to get the gun to fire or have to do is cancel the safety and press the trigger. Remember, there can't be condition two if the gun doesn't have a hammer. By definition, that hammer is forward. When you don't have that feature, you're gonna skip that one. But based on the idea that this gun has a mechanical frame mounted safety, it does have condition one, which is round chambered, safety on. Condition zero would be, I'm going to cancel the safety. Now, if I press the trigger, the gun will discharge. So let's move on to a polymer frame striker fired gun with no manual safety. This is the Glock 17, fine weapon, extremely popular amongst civilians and law enforcement. 
really a nice choice for a handgun as long as we understand how it works. So good news for us is condition four is what it's always been, magazine removed, slide lock to the rear, and that way I can visibly inspect the chamber. Complete safe weapon. To get to condition three, remarkably similar to the rest, all I have to do is close the slide, insert the magazine now, gun's still a paperweight, until I operate the slide and chamber around. This is what would be called condition three. No round in chamber, magazine inserted. Now we need to stop right here because this is commonly, in my experience, the way people carry this gun if they carry it in public. And a lot of times it's the way they store the gun at home. Their feeling is that it's an added safety feature in that they, if they inadvertently get on the trigger, the gun won't discharge. That's true. I would agree with that. The thing that I disagree with, however, is the idea that you're going to be able to do this should you need the gun in an emergency. My humble opinion is not going to happen. Imagine trying to clear a garment, pull this gun out, chamber around by operating the slide, and then getting the gun on target. That's a pretty good list when you're scared. Not to mention that always assumes that you have enough situational awareness to create the time required to do all of that. What I would suggest is that you don't carry this gun until you have the skill set and the competency to carry it with a round in the chamber. Quite simply, in my mind, this isn't going to work. I know people who store their guns in Condition 3 in their home. Sometimes that's because they have children, they have whatever their living situation is. They're also not comfortable doing this. I can't tell you how to run your household, but what I would tell you is, is if this gun is in an approved, in a, in a safe place, whether it's a safe, however you're storing the gun, that's going to create time for you to go access it. And then the more you have to do to the gun, your chances of being successful with it are going down dramatically. So keep that in mind. The more safe you get, it also means the more time is required to actually get the gun to fire. So... How do we get to condition two with the Glock? Well, the answer is you don't. There's no hammer. There's no safety. There's nothing for us to do when the round is chambered except for pulling the trigger. So oddly enough, it really pretty much only applies to guns with hammers and safeties. This guy, once we chamber, is actually at zero. When I press the trigger, the gun will discharge, whether I amend it to or not. So you have to keep that in mind. Speaking of that, they're your weapons. You've chosen them, and you must always be aware of their condition of readiness. My suggestion to people is always don't change the conditions of readiness. If you have multiple guns around your house, try to store them in the same condition. Lots of our arguments for and against condition three, two, one, zero, whatever side of those you're on. I get it. Do what's right for you. But the more consistent you are, the safer you're going to be. One final word on conditions of readiness. However you decide to store or carry your guns, the big key is being familiar with what you have to do to get the gun to fire. And that also should mean that you should know what you have to do to get it to not fire just as equally as important. They're your weapons. The only thing that makes you safe is knowing the system, knowing how your gun operates, and planning accordingly. Remember, your best safety is your brain. Thanks for spending some time with me. I'd really like for you to subscribe so we can keep making videos. Thank you.